when they, I had got home from my morning training session. I hadn't even changed my clothes yet. And the phone rings and I pick it up and he's like, Hey, this is Fred Weintraub. I was like, Fred Weintraub, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. You know, no, this is really Fred Weintraub. Fred Weintraub who produced Enter the Dragon. Yes, because it was, I hadn't done anything yet, you know, other than a Gatorade commercial. I did a Gatorade commercial. And there would be no reason why Fred Weintraub would be calling me that I knew of. And so I, I was a little taken aback, you know, I was just like flabbergasted that he was calling me. And, and he says, I, wa I want to meet you because Dave Cater told me about you. And he says, I should interview you. And I go, okay, um, let me take a shower and change and I'll be, no, he goes, he goes, I want you to come over right now, right now. Don't do anything right now. And turns out I only lived about a mile away from his office. Wow. And so I was there like within about 10 minutes, you know, and I was standing in front of Fred Weintraub and his daughter, San Sandy Weintraub. And he go and the first thing we sit down in the room and he goes, he goes, uh, so I hear you're a martial artist. And I, I was so pumped up. Yeah, he goes, I hear you do martial arts. I stood up. I go, you want to see some? You know, it, was, it was like that. You know? I was so ready, so fired up, you know. And, you know uh, How old were you? How old was, were you? Were you like 20? I must have been. I was, I was like 26, maybe. 26? 25. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Such yeah. an incredible opportunity. That goes to show that yeah. opportunity does show up. We you just got to be ready, right? We got to be ready for the opportunities yeah. and, to come. You know, over the years, I, I don't think I was as hungry, you know, to be in the right place at the right time, so to speak, where, where you just have to be everywhere, you know? And so I got a lot of opportunities just from people I knew and stuff like that over the years. And um, that King of the Kickboxers, uh, you know, some of the auditions, I had a lot of fun on them, too, because I would go for it on auditions. You know? <laughs> if they wanted me to fight someone, I would fight them. <laughs> if they wanted me to demonstrate a weapon or whatever, I just came ready. You know, I was ready, you know, and I think that that would show up, you know, in, in my audition, you know, compared to other people because, you know, maybe they wouldn't be as ready. I was ready. Let me tell you, I was ready. And, and so um, because I knew I wasn't you know, like a true actor, like who had studied his craft and all that. Although I did, after that, start training in acting because I didn't want to be working on your ready, skills. Not yeah, ready yeah, for the yeah. audition. And I, you know, but usually the auditions were, this was the first part I got in Hollywood was really funny. It was, uh, this was right before the China O'Brien thing. I did a movie called, and it was for, with Playboy Bunnies oh. in Hawaii. And it was it was called Picasso Trigger. Yeah, yeah. And you 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 were killed in a motorcycle or something, right? Weren't you in the yeah, motorcycle yeah, and you get yeah. killed? I, I watched it. Motorcycle. I watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, a motorcycle champion named Bruce Penhall. He was a world champion motorcycle rider. And it, it was it was so much fun, but uh, the audition, the guy goes, give me a sheet, here's your lines. It was like, hey, you, you know, something like that. Hey, you. And then the guy goes, I go, I go, hey, you. He goes, oh, that was great. And he goes, he goes, can you do a backflip? And I go, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so he goes, you got the part. You know? Yeah, so good. <laughs> it's, just, it's just funny. And then that time that I auditioned for King of the Kickboxers, yeah. I can't remember how exactly I got that audition, but I think I might have had an agent at that time. Uh, although they probably could have figured out how to contact me anyway, because that the guy, Keith Stramberg, who wrote King of the Kickboxers, um, was really good friends with a guy named Keith Vitale, who was a yeah. competitor who I knew. And so who knows how they got my name, but they called me in and, you know, who was standing, uh, out in in the lot who was sitting in the lobby was don the dragon wilson who I'm sure wow you know. and, yeah of course i i know benny i know those names obviously benny yukides had already re auditioned before i got there and so i knew that the, they were you know the competition was tough and they were looking at you know world champion kickboxers and stuff to play this kickboxer role and dude i was so ready i was so ready i get in that audition and that the uh they called him NG, 
the producer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he had me do read lines and stuff like that. And then he goes, okay, now I want to see some martial arts. He goes, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Avedon, you know, the star. Oh yeah, Lauren. Yeah, yeah, of course. Boxer, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Was there in the audition. He was there. He already had the part, you know, he was basically, it was built for him, the movie. And he says, Lauren, stand up, do some martial arts with him. I was so ready. Let me tell you. You kicked his like, ass. I just started. You kicked I his started ass. whomping on his ass. And I bet you, <laughs> even to this day, because I don't, he's a great martial artist too, but I was so pumped up. You know, this was another audition that he had to sit through. But me, I wanted to kick some ass, you know, because I wanted to get the part. And so I started, you know, I figured this is kickboxing. I started kicking him on his legs and then I do a jump spin kick and just miss his face by like that much, you know? Oof. And then I was really kicking him though in the body and the legs. And I was just like relentless all over him, you know? And I looked over at the producer and he was laughing. He was, he was just like, Oh my God. He was just, he was just like, so anyway, I ended up getting that part. So it's yeah. good that you played a drunkard. <laughs> <laughs> it's good yeah. that you played a drunk. Yeah. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa. Because whoa. nowadays, uh, sometimes I work as a stuntman, and a lot of the times we get people who are, you know, they're new to the business, and so they're really pumped up and they really want to hit. And it's like, no, 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 this is oh, pretend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is play pretend. So, but I guess that when when you're young like that and you want that part so bad, you're gonna do that stuff. But I'm glad nobody got hurt. Yeah. And can can you please say this for me? Hear the sound of one hand clapping. Can you please say that for me? Hear the sound of one hand clapping. Ah, that's what I don't <laughs> like about the martial art. It's this mystical jumbo <laughs> shit. It's something, it says something like that. And you say something like, worthless piece of shit, American. I heard that. And you're like, I wanted you to. <laughs> See, I remember yes, all the yes. lines, man. I'm your yeah. biggest fan. Come you're on. Than me. You're, no, you're no, no, than me. no, no, no way, no way. Hear the sound of one hand clapping. What the hell does this stuff mean? That's the trouble I always have with the Orient, this mystical shit. You really know what it means? Of course. Okay, tell me. Doesn't work that way. Have to find out for yourself. Bullshit, you don't know. Do too. Now get back to your meditation. I'm listening to a fucking drunk. Worthless piece of shit, American. I heard that. I wanted you to. <laughs> <laughs>